It's about informing the people with the facts to know what's really happening in Thailand, inside government, business, society, with real players, talking to leaders and decision makers, seeking answers with perspective, issues that affect Thailand's future. This is Thailand. This is the Insider Thailand. So, dear club, and thank you for watching the Insider for joining us at the Insider. As we come to the end of our six seasons and the beginning of the new one, we'll take the time to recollect our key episode and bring you some highlights of our interviews. You will recall our exclusive meeting with the Excellencies, the Ambassador of Australia and the People's Republic of China, and how both envoys talk about the unique relation that Thailand has with their respective countries. Not to mention Thailand's commitment to these enduring regional partnerships. We also saw how Thailand hosts the ASEAN 2017 International Fleet Review and how this event epitomized the centrality of ASEAN to regional security management. And we saw how Thailand was making progress on transforming its transport infrastructure, the digital economy, a more efficient and modern business environment, and of course, our sustained commitment to combating human trafficking. So here are the highlights of our sixth season and to our viewer, thank you very much for watching and for taking your time to join us each week. The relation between Australia and Thailand is quite long, 65 years. In your opinion, what is the uniqueness of the relation of the two countries? Well, we celebrate 65 years of diplomatic relations this year. Uh, of course, the relationship goes back much longer than just the 65 years of our diplomatic relationship. Um, but the relationship is built on so many different areas of cooperation and partnership and history. And I think that's what makes it very special. Um, it's a big economic relationship for both Australia and Thailand. We feature as the eighth largest trading partner for each country, $21 billion worth of trade. A uh, trade that's doubled since the signature of our free trade agreement a number of years ago. It's a big education relationship. We have um, nearly 30,000 Thai students studying in Australia every year. That's the fourth largest number of students from our country. And you are very well, much one of them and a very very significant member of our alumni and uh, we're very proud of our alumni and of course we're particularly proud of the fact that His Majesty the King is a very distinguished member of the uh, Thai alumni from studying in Australia. But the relationship goes across many areas, as I mentioned, education, commerce and trade, but also the political relationship is very important. But it's that people to people relationship which makes it very special. The fact that we get 900,000 Australian tourists coming to Thailand every year, that's very important. Many Australians know Thailand extremely well. And now in Australia, I think we have more Thai restaurants than we have Chinese restaurants. Talking about the special relations between China and Thailand, yes. I think one sentence is the best description. It's Jin Thai Pinongkan. The term which is very important, Jin Thai Pinongkan. What does that mean? It's a very famous uh, set phrase yes. among Thais and Chinese. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a vivid description of the uniqueness of our bilateral relations. Uh, we have a long history of uh, friendly exchanges of visits and contacts. It can uh, go back as far as to the first century, which is the Chinese Han Dynasty. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have uh, Chinese envoys and business people uh, sailing back and forth between the two countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, later, in the 10th century, which is our Song Dynasty, there are Chinese coming to live in Thailand. And there we find evidence of our uh, very ancient uh, cultures and uh, friendly exchanges. Mm -hmm. We have a, such a long history <laughs> of uh, exchanges of culture and our long tradition. And besides that, uh, both the Chinese people and Thai people, uh, we, we th always think that uh, we should treat others nicely and love peace. And the first groups of Chinese immigrants came to Thailand. They are 
very uh, well integrated into the Thai society. They stay loyal to the royal family, and uh, they made contributions to the local It's economy. Indeed. Yeah, and uh, nowadays we also help each other during those natural disasters. Uh, for example, the Indian Ocean tsunami mm -hmm. and the floods in Thailand a few years ago, and also when we will have earthquakes in Wenchuan and uh, Yushu, the Thai people offer also extend a very uh, helpful hand to us. So uh, we are two nations has a unique, strong bond, which help us in trying times. Mm -hmm. In the long years of development of bilateral relations. Uh, this Jin Tai Pinonga is re reflected in every aspect. We become good friends, which uh, treat each other sincerely. We become good partners, uh, cooperating closely. We become good relatives, which exchange visits frequently. About the International Fleet Review, This is very important, not for Thailand, but for ASEAN. In your perception, so what does this very important event mean for, for you, for the region, and for ASEAN? Well, thank you so much for having me in this program. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the Asian countries and Thailand for this uh, jubilee and also for the anniversary of the Thailand Navy. Thank you. So um, this opportunity is uh, paramount for us. I think that this is a good sample of how countries have organized to work together and uh, to review that after 50 years and to see the future, uh, to establish a point of contact, of human contact for non-Asian countries like my country, Peru, is a, is a great opportunity. So uh, I'm very glad to be here and to share this opportunity with all of you. Talking about the International Fleet Review, you know, as you are chief of the Singapore Navy, you know, we are ASEAN. How important of this event to, to ASEAN? Well, I think first and foremost, thank you very much. I think it's a privilege to be here. And uh, if I would just like to extend my warmest congratulations to the Thai Navy for an uh, excellently organized uh, fleet review. Uh, ASEAN is uh, 50 this year. And if we look at the progress and the stability that we've enjoyed over the last 50 years, I think the role of ASEAN is uh, without a doubt. And therefore, um, be it in terms of economic integration or security collaboration, ASEAN has played a huge role in this region. So having a fleet review to commemorate that uh, 50th anniversary, I think is a critical milestone. It shows that the ASEAN navies are able to work together very, very closely and through working together, uh, be able to bring partners uh, from around the world to come here uh, because we all have a common interest and a stake in a safe and secure maritime environment. Thailand Chamber of Commerce play a vital role in um, helping you know, the, the private sectors, of course, the entrepreneur. As you mentioned, since you mentioned the a number of government policies such as the Thailand 450, but uh, among other things, we also have the, the uh, policy of digital economy. We have um, you know the policy or the, the um, you know, policy of leaving no one behind and um, inclusiveness. Um, how does this create opportunity, um, job opportunity or trading opportunity? First of all, uh, we have to touch on the EEC first. Yes. So I think the EEC will generate more income and also how can we have, what you said, left no one behind. So if a new project, that means more jobs. If more jobs, that means have to be trained, trained more and more. With 4.0, a lot of uh, new technology will be used, new digital technology will be used, uh, more automation will be used. So that means that we use less people. So how can we train the existing people, the farmer people, use the new technology mm -hmm. to help to uh, uh, grab these opportunities. For example, EEC, you have a lot of people we could be in mm -hmm. here. That means more food which we, we, we eat, right, mm -hmm. we eat in the future. So more food we have to supply to this, to this area. So around the, these uh, provinces, we have to get more productivities 
for the farming to supply food into to this area. That means you know the new uh, Vicharat one part mm -hmm. we call uh, modern farming. That we have to help generate food income, you know food uh, processing into this area, mm -hmm. and also at the same time we have to train train uh, the farmers or individual who have existing job right now to grab these opportunities for the new you know the digital uh, innovation that you come to EEC. Mm -hmm. For example, the new factories that we come here, that there are the new five or ten new S curve. And also another one is for the tourism. EEC we have a tourism area mm -hmm. to generate income for this part also. So we be lots of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And also another one that, that um, I really appreciate about the, the card, the social member card, mm -hmm. the social welfare welfare card mm -hmm. that for the low income. Mm -hmm. So that I think is a good idea that how can we uh, get the new technology to know who is who each province, mm -hmm. uh, what type of uh, money, what type of facility or welfare they need for individual and you can direct the money to them right away. Mm -hmm. So that is, is a good idea. So I think that's like how can we uh, distribute the income, mm -hmm. distribute the the, the money to the uh, the village people. Mm -hmm. So then after that, this village people we can we can generate more income, many turns, mm -hmm. you know, to to the economy. How advanced of Thailand in terms of the digitalization? I think uh, it is quite important to communicate. Uh, in this digital world, as we have uh, advanced technology to deploy, and at the same time, it's, it's a juncture where Thailand is going to move. And the reason that we need to move and we are going to move is because of the ecosystem that the government has been building over the past few years. For Thailand at this point in time, we are at a point where we are transforming. And the reason that we can transform is because we are able to deploy digital technology uh, not only for the macro economy but also to the grassroots uh, as well. But I think it's important for the society to understand today that uh, digital transformation will be able to transform Thailand to another level. And the other, another level refers to Thailand 4.0, yes. as we all know, as well as uh, major projects even the, the rail, high-speed rail link today has some digital uh, content in it yes. uh, of connectivity. And as we know, there are two kinds of connectivity. It's physical connectivity and digital connectivity. And we are complementing each other. The government plays particularly important on the EEC in order to, to, you know, to be the new engine growth of the country's economy. How your organization um, you know, related to or involved with the EEC? Once we introduced the Thailand 4.0, as I mentioned before, that the key word is innovation. So we need to move from research and development, move from prototype to be the product from the lab to the market. Yes. We need a translational research yes. to translate from the lab to the industry. That's why ESI is going to be, we call it innovation hub. Mm -hmm. In that area, we're going to do a lot of translational research. We're going to provide a lot of national quality infrastructure. When we're talking about natural quality infrastructure, we're talking about methodology, testing, standard quality, we're going to provide everything over there, and we're going to build a pilot plant, demonstration plant, a huge demonstration plant going to be there to scale up our product or prototype in the lab scale to the industrial scale. So we would like to work in closely with the industry. We have a lot of pipeline, a prototype pipeline in the research organization as well as the research university in Thailand. We can join together with the industry and upscale it using the pilot plan that we're going to produce in ECI. After that, after we do optimization, we can move all the people and all the technology to build a factory and do a new business. In our aim, we would like to introduce a new 
economics to the country, a new industry to the country, because we know that if we own the same industry as we done previous time, we try to upgrade them, we try to do how to call it the productivity, we cannot overcome the middle income trap. If we want to overcome the middle income trap using innovation, we have to promote a new industry to Thai people, especially on the bio-based economy, digital-based economy that we're going to do over there in, in EECI to support the policy of, of, of uh, our government. Without the EEC or the Eastern Economic Corridor, the Thai government would provide the facility or infrastructure in order to, to facilitate um, those investors. Actually, the uh, EEC policy is, the, uh, is the moving Thailand to next level of the value chain, uh, higher technology. But the infrastructure is, 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 is very important to make sure that the, uh, all the uh, uh, transportation and the uh, connectivity uh, between the, uh, the region, the eastern uh, region and the capital city in Bangkok will be well connected. Mm -hmm. So infrastructure ranging also again the motorway. You talk about motorway. Motorway and the uh, sub-network of the motorway. But more importantly is the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the airport. The airport is one of the flagship projects in the EEC. Actually there are three flagship projects in the EEC for infrastructure. Number one is the uh, development of the Utapau Airport. But our policy is the, to develop as uh, the Utapau Airport to becoming, uh, becoming the international airport. Mm -hmm. So we will be upgrading the uh, Utapau Airport by the uh, uh, Royal Navy mm -hmm. uh, up to 60 million. From three million to six? 60 million. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, our a uh, big uh, aim uh, for uh, water power. How long will it take to get to that state? Actually, the uh, 15 years. It's a long-term project and will be included in the national strategy. Second project is the uh, MRO, maintenance and uh, maintenance re repair and overhaul of the aircraft. Because the, uh, uh, you know, when you look at the Thailand, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the growth of the aviation is tremendous. The airport itself that we need to expand. In order to receive up to the 60 million, we need to build the second runway as well. And the training center of the human resources uh, for the aviation industry will be, will be there also. Okay. And the third project in the, uh, in the Eastern Economic Corridor will be the high-speed rail. As I mentioned, you know, Bangkok Rayong and the uh, three airports uh, linked uh, by the uh, high-speed rail. Utapau, Suvandapum, and, and, and Don Mueang. Okay. So that are, that are three big projects uh, by the uh, Eastern Economic uh, Corridor Committee. There are also the, the deep seaport, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the third phase of the, our Lam Chabang port as well. So we need the, uh, to build the, uh, speed up the uh, third uh, uh, deep sea port at Lam Chabang. Let's say that if everyone, every sector in the society agree that we would follow the national strategy, what would be the tangible outcome for the people and for the private sectors? So uh, if, if uh, we are able to, to uh, continue to uh, fulfill uh, each goal, then the, of course I think the people income will uh, continuously uh, increase for the next uh, 20 years and uh, the growth will be more uh, inclusive so I think the, uh, all the people I think the welfare or their life I think the, will be uh, better off I think the, in terms of the uh, green growth I think the, we should uh, be able to feel that uh, uh, we take care of the environment uh, better and also the, in terms of the government will be more efficient in the service I think, and take care of the people. I think, uh, by, by the way, I would like to mention that uh, for the uh, current uh, government in terms of the uh, area of the national strategy of, of the 
good common good governance i think so we have just uh, been the uh, read by the ease of doing business of the world bank which the, this year we improved the rank from the 46 up to the 26 in the ranking so this will be the area that will be continuously improved in the national strategy Under this government, we play a very particular importance on um, co combating human trafficking. So what do you see? Any change or any improvement in this area that you have uh, seen lately? I have to say that's a significant shift. Um, in the past, the NGO has to support a lot with the law enforcement to help push the case forward. But now we have seen that Many of the law enforcement units are actually taking the ownership and we rarely have to do anything, we just give them the tips. And we can see a better collaboration, like uh, in December we arrested over 14 Ugandans, women and men, who traffic other Ugandan to be a sex worker in Thailand. Um, in that case, we see that the government and law enforcement start to be very um, proactive. Mm -hmm. The government really take uh, seriously in these issues. In your opinion, in order to tackle this problem, uh, human trafficking in any circumstances, uh, what is the key of success? Victims, victim-centric approach. We need to give, victim is the best witness. So we need to look after victims really well. My team, we have our slogan that victims are our boss. We want to say that they are our boss and we want to treat them well. What do you expect from, from um, the government sectors in order to, to uh, achieve uh, the goal of combating human trafficking? I can feel that um, our government have, have done so much already, but for sure there are ways that we can improve, such as uh, victims' um, services in the social welfare support, or how the law enforcement can put victim at the center and treat victims you know, as a human being, as a person, and I think if you when you gain the trust, then you get the real story. The Insider is now approaching the start of the seventh season, and we have an exciting lineup for you as we cover the major issues and developments in Thailand with the people at the center of the government policy implementation, diplomacy, business innovation, economic transformation, social causes, and Thailand's progress in sustainable development. Of course, this show would have not been possible without the great support from our special guests, all of whom have taken the time to share their insight and experiences on matters that affect the well-being of the Thai people and indeed the country. Again, we are most grateful for their contribution and also look forward to revisiting with them in the future to follow up on the key issues that remain to be completed. Of course, for the own Thai government, our work to set Thailand toward a new direction of stability and prosperity continues and throughout this process, the insider will bring you updates and evaluation on the real progress that is being made, the challenges that remain and indeed the issues that need our attention. So as we close the season 6, thank you very much for watching the insider and I look forward to seeing you in our next season. สวัสดีครับ